When you switch to Linux, there are going to be things that you don't know how to do. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. When you switch to something new, you're going to have to learn things and you're going to have to learn new ways of doing things. It's just the nature of the thing. So it's not surprising that when you switch to Linux, you're going to make some mistakes. It's just going to happen. And I think that there are a few mistakes that pretty much almost everyone has made at some point during their Linux career. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Five mistakes almost every Linux user has made somewhere along the line. So the first one is that people, and in this case Linux users, give up way too early when they discover trouble on their machines. If you are a fairly new Linux user and you find that your dis displays are flickering or they're tearing or something like that, there's a good chance that you are going to just distro hop to something different instead of trying to solve the problem. And it's that way with even minor issues, like if you're having problems where the cursor changes size or something, I don't know, just something random off the top of my head. It doesn't have to be a very significant problem to kind of make people think that you should distro hop instead of solving the problem. And there are many reasons why this is the case. First of all, it is easy to distro hop. So it might be just something where you're kind of lazy and you're just like, well, I'm just going to go to a different distro instead of trying to solve the problem. So that's part of it. Some of it is that the Linux community isn't the most friendly when it comes to new users. So maybe you've had a bad experience in the arts forums or something like that. And uh, you don't want to have to go there again and ask for help just to be told to read the effing manual. Maybe that's the reason why you've just decided it's easier to distro hop than it is to go seek help. So there are many reasons why people give up on problems so fast when it comes to Linux because there are hundreds of Linux distros out there. So there's this idea that if you're having a problem on one, maybe that problem won't exist on another one. And sometimes, and maybe even most of the time, that's probably the case. You're just going to find other issues on that distro, but that's kind of beside the point. So that's the first mistake everyone makes. And I think that I'm going to get some comments saying, well, I've never distro hopped in my entire life. And well, maybe there are exceptions to the rule, but I think that most people, at least so, at some point during their Linux career, probably very early, decided that it was easier to distro hop than it was to solve a problem. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. The second mistake everyone makes is that they think that the grass is greener on the other side of the aisle. So what this means is that a lot of times you install a distribution. Let's just say you've installed Fedora and it is working phenomenally well, like very, very well. All your stuff's working, all your hardware's working, all the applications you need have been downloaded and set up and configured. You have your customizations all in place and everything is working just fantastically, except for one thing. Maybe you are having some issues theming the display manager or you're having some issues where there's one little application that you don't really need but you'd really like to have and it's just not available in the Fedora repos and you haven't been able to build it or whatever. Whatever this little problem is, it doesn't matter. It's not significant in the grand scheme of things and otherwise Fedora is a fantastically usable distro and it's working just really well. You have this scenario in your head but there's this idea that creeps into your brain. Despite the fact that you're having a fantastic Linux experience, there's this idea that if you switch to Ubuntu, you're going to have an even better time. It's just going to be that slightly bit better. It has that one application that you really need or whatever. And you're going to have a fantastic experience if you just distro hop. That's something that a lot of us experience. When you're talking about Linux and you've, ex you've installed it and you have a really nice experience, but because there are so many distros that do things in slightly different ways, there's going to be this constant idea in your mind that one of those distros is going to be able to improve upon your workflow, whatever, and make you just that little bit happier. Even though it's probably not true, like I could, right now I'm having a fantastic time on Fedora. My experience on Fedora has just blown almost every other Linux experience I've ever had out of the water, and this is true. But there's still a thought in my mind that if I were to switch to Arch, or I were to switch to OpenSUSE, or I was switch to Ubuntu, I would have an even better experience because they're doing something just a little bit different. And that's the grass is greener on the other side. It's almost never actually the case. I don't want to say that that's necessarily a mistake to think that way, 
but it does often lead you to regrets. So if you are having a, an amazing Linux experience with whatever you have installed right now, there's a good chance that when you do eventually give in and distro hop, you're going to have problems on that new distro, even though you were promised the world. So you will have some driver issues or you'll have some package availability issues, something like that. And you'll realize that maybe the grass wasn't greener. Maybe you should have kept that install of Fedora that was working so well and you shouldn't have hopped. This happens, I think, a lot, and it definitely has affected me in the past. The third mistake that pretty much everyone on Linux makes, and probably even broader, everyone who uses a computer makes, at some time in their career, they've deleted something that they shouldn't have deleted. So, I'm not really talking about photos or documents or whatever. That happens to a lot of people. But when you are experiencing the Linux file system for the first time, and you're kind of spelunking into it, and discovering new things all the time, you will almost certainly decide at some point that there's something in a directory somewhere that you don't actually need because you don't know what it is. And you just go ahead and delete it. And then your computer doesn't work the way it should. Or maybe you've uninstalled a dependency for something that you used, but you didn't really know what it was. Or even if it was like automated. So something like uh, sudo apt auto remove will sometimes remove dependencies that you actually do need. And it will just kind of bork your system. Everyone has done something like that along the line. And it just kind of happens. There's not much you can do about it. You can either try to reinstall the thing that you uninstalled. Or just kind of wipe it clean and start over again. It's just something that a lot of people do. And it's normal. It's something that you will eventually learn from, obviously. So if, if you've done it once, you probably won't do it again because you've learned your lesson. And it's a good lesson to learn. The next one on the list is something that I do all the time. I install something and then I've forgotten that I installed it almost immediately. So there are applications on my computer right at this moment that I installed for some reason. And uh, I have no clue uh, why they're there. Or sometimes like I'll go back into like Rofi or something and discover that I installed something. I'm like, why did I install that thing? Everyone does this. It's completely normal. Especially when you are experiencing something new and you're installing a whole bunch of programs to kind of find the things that you need to find. Or maybe you're interested in discovering new applications or whatever the case happens to be. You're going to be installing a whole bunch of stuff and then you'll forget to uninstall it. So you'll come across some of that stuff like a year later, like, I don't really know what that thing is. You know, like, it just happens. And while it's not a mistake, it's something that everyone does. So that's why it's on the list. The last one on the list is something that I feel a lot of brand new Linux users do. And the reason why is because on Windows, you are very used to Windows handling all your updates for you. When it comes to operating system updates, Windows is very persistent when it comes to forcing you to update, forcing you to reboot, all this stuff. It's one of the reasons why a lot of Linux users don't like Windows. They don't want to be forced to do that updating on Microsoft's schedule. They want to be able to be in control. And that's the thing about Linux is that you are in control of your updates. And it doesn't matter what distribution you're on, even if the distribution has like reminders for you to update, those things are so easy to get rid of, right? Linux is never going to force you to update your system. And that can lead to some problems, right? If you never update your system, when you eventually do go back to update your system, you're either going to break things or you're just going to be dealing with security issues and stuff like that all the time. And that's not all that great of an experience. But I think that because a lot of Windows users who come to Linux are so used to having their update thing managed for them, they're not used to having that control, so they get to the point where they just never update their system because they're not being forced to do it. Then when the person who helps them with Linux, because they probably almost certainly have one, comes along and tries to update their system, they're going to experience some problems. Like, oh my god, this thing hasn't been updated in three years. Probably not the end of the world, but it's definitely not something that you'd ever experience on any other operating system that kind of forces you to update. So that's the fifth mistake that almost everyone makes. Although I would say that that one there is probably less common than the others. 
if you are more familiar with Linux, even though you maybe you've never used it full time, you'll probably understand that you need to update your system. But brand new users who are coming to Linux who maybe aren't as familiar with the whole computer management aspect of Linux may not be as used to having that full control and responsibility as someone who's more familiar with it, if I should say that. So those are the five mistakes I think that almost everyone has made at some point or another in their Linux career. I know I've made a vast majority of them, and like I said at the beginning, there's nothing wrong with these mistakes, right? It's part of the learning process. When you delete something or uninstall something that you weren't supposed to, you're going to learn not to do that ever again. You're going to always pay attention to what you're deleting, what you're uninstalling. After you've made that mistake once, you likely will never make it again. It's like touching a hot stove, you know? When you're a little kid, you're going to touch something hot. That's how you learn not to do that anymore. It's a great way to learn trial by error, you know? So if you have comments about this kind of stuff, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear some of the mistakes you've made with Linux. I know I've definitely made more than just these five. You can also follow me on Twitter, at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast, just like all these fine people. If you want to support me for a full year in advance on Patreon, you can get 10% off. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all amazing. The channel just would not be where it is without you. So thank you so very, very much. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.